a number of things um, have been working in what we're doing. The first one is, um, um, as you have seen in the last slide, um, is a program of uh, community education and awareness um, that we've embarked upon, um, which includes uh, giving lectures at the time before COVID, person-to-person uh, -person lectures at universities, we're meeting with schools, we um, working with preschool children, and during COVID, um, with uh, limited access to schools, we've started in Soweto also to basically um, um, clean up the schools and, and implement um, uh, food gardens for when the schools open. Uh, secondly, um, reclaim our work, uh, I led uh, separation and source awareness campaigns and training programs. We've um, come up with training programs in, in particular for around COVID awareness um, for reclaimers. Um, and we've looked at what uh, the Department of Health has had to say on, on, on safety, and we've adapted a lot of the uh, practices that are ensure that people are safe. We also have, uh, thirdly, a pilot um, um, a scheme that has been running in association with VETS, Unilever, Polyco, uh, Petco, and others um, to innovate uh, a program for payment of, of services and to see what impact it has in terms of the amount of recyclables collected. Fourthly, registration and, and organizing by, by waste picker and reclaim organizations um, um, is, a, is, a, is a big positive. Um, it shows that um, we can come together and that uh, we can start the important process of actually counting the number of people that are involved. And we're looking forward um, to this program. And also, we um, um, there has been in a number of areas uh, resident and reclaimer partnerships, uh, reclaimers working with uh, residents associations, with uh, uh, councillors with uh, other community leaders to ensure uh, cleanups of uh, certain areas, including river cleanups. Um, the, and of course, the next one is, is multi-stakeholder uh, collaboration, as we've mentioned, uh, plastic pet, uh, uh, PROs, uh, corporate uh, um, citizens, and of course, um, bodies like uh, UNEP, UNIDO, um, the Japanese government um, in coming together and actually facilitating a lot of these uh, success stories that we've seen. And of course, the last one is um, um, industry and waste picker collaboration on waste picker led programs, be it education, be it um, working with uh, supporting us, our work in working with residents. Next slide, please. Next slide, thank you. What can be scaled up? Um, we believe that there's, um, there are opportunities for, for scaling up um, in terms of the success, uh, successful programs that we've uh, undertaken. Um, the first one is the, is the ARO, UNIDO, VETS um, uh, pilot uh, separation and source program in, um, in the community of Brixton and Auckland Park. Um, which has actually given us for the first time um, unique uh, insight into how the informal sector works and how the average reclaimer actually collects. And uh, I think later on there's going to be a video um, about this program and we can see some of the uh, uh, statistics that are beginning to come out um, of that, which are, I think, very unique. Um, the second is, is payment of, 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 of reclaimers. Um, if we are able to, to innovate systems of payment uh, for people sometimes that are undocumented, uh, what the pilot has shown is that um, by providing a, a payment for services rendered, um, we are seeing increases in the number of, uh, of uh, materials that are actually picked by, by reclaimers. Thirdly, um, support for, 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 for waste picker organizations and organizing. Um, what waste picker organizations or reclaimer organizations do is to take thousands and thousands of disparate individuals, put them together, um, make sure that they have a common voice, because it is impossible for stakeholders, for corporates, for government to speak to thousands of, of different people. And a lot of this invisible work is, is often unsupported um, and, and supported by, by us collecting um, recyclables. So 
this is one of the key areas um, where support is needed and it is also needed for us to, to move to other provinces and to work with the government and, and municipalities in ensuring um, that these programs are scaled up. Fourthly, training and education awareness by reclaimers, um, which has happened mostly during the COVID uh, period, where, as I've mentioned before, we've um, um, started uh, training programs amongst reclaimers on safe handling of materials, um, how to protect yourself against COVID and also even to, to produce our own um, sanitizers. The fifth one is, is uh, training education um, of local officials to understand and to implement uh, integration. And the, the guidelines in this case um, are going to be very, very, very key and critical in terms of this. Sixth um, point on what can be upscaled is support for municipal integration plans and programs. Um, and I think at the moment, um, those municipalities that are, have been um, uh, very keen and are starting on integration plans, um, a lot of these plans are not funded and they are not uh, uh, being systematized and, uh, and a lot more municipalities are also waiting for, for the guidelines to be released so that uh, these things can become part of um, the, the KPIs of, of official, officials, which it's not at the moment. Um, what else can be scaled up is uh, COVID-19 occupational health and safety training and, and the issuing out of, of equipment and, um, and uh, um, PPEs and other things that are necessary for, for reclaimers to do their work. The next is, is infrastructure for, for, for waste pickers, the provision of uh, material recovery facilities, um, recycling hubs um, are, are necessary. And as we've seen with um, thanks, I think, to the minister's intervention during the level five lockdown, when reclaimers were not allowed to work, um, we saw quite an up -peak, um, uh, uptake in the, num in the amount of materials that are actually being being thrown into the landfills. And, and in some cities, I think it reached crisis point and it actually showed the important intervention that the informal sector makes in terms of ensuring that the material is collected before it actually hits the landfill sites or even in the landfill sites, it's actually collected before it's actually buried. Um, the provisions of uh, PPEs and uniforms, once again, um, this is an important thing we've seen during COVID. A lot of reclaimers um, do not have access to that to, to, to such equipment. And, and, and in some instances, they have actually been breaking um, COVID regulations because they don't actually have, you can't afford PPEs. So this is another area that can be scaled up. And lastly, uh, technical and organizational training and education for, for waste pickers to ensure that uh, a lot of the facilities that are provided are, are, are done properly. Um, key challenges and gaps. I think that um, what uh, COVID has revealed um, is the importance of uh, spaces for sorting um, um, and, and the difficulties in, in, in accessing municipal and government land. At the moment, um, um, in the informal sector relies on informal means to, to gain access to, to space. These spaces are not regulated, sometimes are not serviced, and, and they are sometimes very close to residential areas, which is really, really not, not ideal. And, um, and, and uh, what COVID has shown is the importance of, of us tackling the issue of space because reclaimers have been storing materials uh, even before COVID um, with the collapse, as the minister had, uh, mentioned, the collapse in oil prices had an ongoing impact on the recycling sector with um, uh, a lot of uh, excess uh, stockpile of materials. A lot of these materials, uh, we've seen mountains in my work, we see mountains of plastic that are basically being stored, waiting for, for markets. And, and it, it shows the importance of actually um, accessing space for, for the informal sector to, to actually do its work and for those spaces to be serviced and, and, and to, be, to be properly kept. Um, secondly, in terms of gaps, it's the ongoing uh, privatization of, of private companies over the informal sector. Uh, what we're seeing are uh, uh, implementation of, um, of uh, separation and source programs that uh, basically marginalize the informal sector. And of course, the irony is that these programs will never actually work because um, uh, the informal sector will always find ways of, of getting access to materials. So, you have a situation where millions of rands are spent, you know, on these separation and source programs, but they are not really effective 
and the informal sector continues to collect the materials anyway. And I think it's a win, it's a it's a lose lose situation in that sense. Another key challenge is is an up is a lack of core funding for for waste picker and reclaimer organisations. And I need to emphasise this one because a lot of this labour of putting together thousands and thousands of people is unrecognised, hidden, and it's actually quite costly. For us to ensure that these programs are upscaled, to ensure that we have an uptake in the number of plastic that is collected, to ensure that we don't find the amount of plastics that are going into rivers, we have to encourage the informal sector to 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 do more. And to do that, it means that um, we must not implement uh, programs that exclude them. And secondly, we, we we have to provide the kind of funding that allows people to 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 be organised. And and fourthly, it's a lack of dedicated funding for integration. Um, although we are very grateful. Um, for the interventions of uh, organizations like uh, UNEP and UNIDO. Um, I think that for municip picking for municipalities and for reclaimers and everyone else who's at the coal face, we don't actually have dedicated funding. And we're hoping out of this plastic colloquium minister um, that um, there will be some um, uh, collaboration together with uh, corporates to look at, um, at funding specifically for, for integration. And, and for us, uh, the other key challenge and gap is uh, lack of respect and, uh, for, 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 for reclaimers and the continued exclusion, exclusion from decision making.